Hi everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode of the Matchbox Restoration series. In this episode I'll be restoring the 11C Taylor Jumbo Crane. The 11C model was introduced in 1964. The model initially came in an all yellow color scheme, like the one I'm having here. Later models came with a red painted weight box. The model has a lot of moving parts, which gives it a high play value. I got this particular model from a lady that sold them after cleaning her attic. It has chip paint all around the casting and has a broken hook. The crane jib itself is leaning forward, so that has to be fixed too. So let's get started. I start by drilling out the one rivet that holds the base onto the body. I use a 4mm drill bit for this. After drilling, I release the model from the vise to remove the base from the body. Next up is the rivet that holds the crane on top of the body. I use the same drill bit as before. The crane comes off easily. I then remove the piston from the crane assembly. When the crane is mounted onto the body, the piston is secured between the body and the weight box. With the crane removed, I can pull the piston from the weight box. After that, the parts can be removed easily. The wheels and axles get removed by sanding away the small lip that holds the wheels in place. One axle sits on the base, the other one sits on the body part of the model. Before paint stripping the model, I'm going to mix the color I'll be using to repaint the green. I'm using the yellow X8 Tamiya acrylic paint as the base color, together with some red X7 Tamiya acrylic paint. After mixing them together, I add the X28 Tamiya thinner to get the right consistency to use with the airbrush. I test if the color matches the original one. Here I notice that the different parts have different shades of yellow, so I decide to clean the crane part with some thinner first. Now that the true color is visible, it's easier to compare it to my color mix. It looks good to go. To remove the original paint, I apply some thick coats of paint stripper with a brush. A lot of parts to process, but I think it will be worth the effort. After 15 minutes the paint stripper has done a wonderful job. The paint comes off rather easily with a brass brush. Some parts will need a second coat of paint stripper, but that's mainly because I missed some parts the first time around. To be sure I can reassemble the crane back onto the body, I drill a hole into the rivet post with a 1.5mm drill bit. I have to be careful that I don't drill too deep, so I don't damage the casting. After that, I do the same with the rivet post on the body. When the holes are drilled, I can tap a 2mm thread into the rivet posts. 
This way I can use M2 to counter some screws to put everything back together once all parts have been painted. Always remember to tap the thread small steps at a time to avoid breaking the tap. A bit of oil might help to smoothen out the process. Because the screws I have laying around are a bit too long, I sand them with my Dremel tool. Whoops! Then I remembered the advice one of my subscribers gave me a couple episodes ago. He suggested to make a tool to easily sand the screw ends. I start by drilling a 1.5mm hole into an angle bracket I have laying around. Then I tap a 2mm thread into the 1.5mm hole, the same way as I did earlier in this restoration. I then use my file to remove the small brims of the drilling. Let's see if this works. Perfect! Thank you Model Motorsport! As you might have seen, the front of the casting is bent inwards. I try to carefully bend it back into shape with some small pliers. I don't use a lot of force on the pliers themselves, so it doesn't create any indents on the casting. You can also see, I test fitted the crane back onto the body using a screw and two small washers. I always check if the base plate still fits the body after bending the casting, so that I don't run into any problems later on. This seems to fit perfectly. We are halfway through the restoration and it's already looking in much better shape than it was at the start. The casting is ready to get a base coat. I use the white Tamiya fine surface primer for this. This model has a lot of different parts, so I need to make sure they look the same after painting. I try to put the same amount of primer on every part, using light coats to prevent any runs. The crane itself might be the hardest part to apply a base coat on. It doesn't really has a part that won't be visible once it's fitted onto the model, so I have to use some fine tweezers to hold the part while applying primer. When the base coat has dried, it's time to put on some color. I first apply a couple light coats of paint to the parts that are hard to access. After that, some thicker coats of paint. I hope that every part will have the same color when I'm done painting. Fingers crossed.
I clean up the axles by running them through some emery paper with my hand drill. The hubs of the axles get the same treatment on a piece of emery paper laying on my workbench. After the axles look nice and shiny again, it's time to put the wheels back on. I use my drill press and custom made axle tool for this. You can check out how I make these tools in the tutorial video I linked in the top right corner. After the wheels are secured, I put together the crane assembly and create a small lip on the end of the axle that holds the crane in place. Now that every part is ready, I can start putting the model back together. I start by putting the piston back in place, followed by the other part that is secured under the weight box. Then I can mount the crane back onto the body with an M2 screw and some washers. The final step is putting back the base into place with another M2 countersunk screw. And that's it! The Taylor Jumbo Crane started off with a worn hook, chipped paint and a crane that tilted to the front. After mounting a new hook, reshaping and repainting the whole model, it's looking like new again. I'm happy with how this one turned out. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Also keep your eye on the community tab of my channel where I'll let you know what I'm working on. If you'd like to have some more exclusive insights and previews of my next restorations, please join me on my Patreon page. And as always, thank you for watching.